Hey guys, in this lesson, we look at the character wizard in Anime Studio Pro version 8. With Anime Studio 8, the biggest feature is probably the character wizard. This allows you to basically go in and create a quick preset character using a variety of different options. And you can also even map out some movements for the character as well. This is great if you're looking to create a very quick character or if you're new to Anime Studio and you just want to get a character out there and start animating. So to begin, make a new document and let's go over here to the top right of your screen and click on Character Wizard. Here we're presented with a window with a variety of different options. And I'll start at the top and work my way down here as far as what each does. First, you have the presets. Basically, you can choose between a man, woman, boy, girl, creature, big head, or mannequin. So depending on your preset, for instance, if you choose big head, you have, of course, a very disproportionate looking character, as opposed to the man, which is more proportionate. You can start with a preset and build off of that. Now, once you have adjusted a preset to your specifications and you like it, and let's say you want to reuse it later on, you can always hit the plus button and name a new preset and hit OK. And that will save your preset so that you can use it later on in different projects if you wish. Anyway, once you have your preset selected, let's move on to the body. We can choose proportions for the body, we can choose the arms and legs, and so on. So for instance, if you want to adjust the height of the character, you could easily do this by dragging this slider. The same goes for any other option. We can adjust the torso, the leg length, the head, how big the head is, and if he's fat or skinny, and so on. So as you can see, just by doing that, we already have a different looking character based on what we just did. Now going down to the arms, you still you have similar options. You can adjust the arm length. You can make the shoulders a different width. You have your arm width, so you can make the arms bigger. You can add muscles if you wish. And you have the hand length even, so you can make the hands huge if you chose to. And finally, for the hands themselves, you can choose square hands, you can choose anime boy mitten hands, you can choose all sorts of different looking hands here, cartoon hands. So if you want, of course, different looking hands, that would be your option. Finally, the legs, you have similar options. You can adjust the hip width, the length of the legs, or the width, excuse me. You can adjust the muscles and so on. And of course, you can adjust what type of shoes your character is wearing. So we could go barefoot if we wanted to. Now, when you're working on your character at any point, you can choose to look at the different views of the character by using the slider here on the bottom. So if we page forward here, we can see what he looks like from the side, from a back three-fourths angle, from the back entirely, and so on. And so this gives you an idea of what he looks like altogether. And as you can see here, there's an export all views box. When this is checked, when you complete your character and hit OK, you will export all of these angles and you'll be allowed to use those angles when animating your project, which will save you a lot of time when it comes to drawing out different angles for a character. Now moving on to the face, you have all sorts of different options here as well. You can choose the head which of course right now we're set to boy spiky, but we could choose anything from an anime boy bald to a generic, which basically kind of gives us a blank template, which right now will then allow us to adjust the width of different things. As you can see, as I'm adjusting it, he kind of looks really weird right now. <laughs> kind of looks like an alien the way I'm adjusting it, but those are some things you can go through and adjust. So we'll just choose one right now. We'll choose chunk, which, okay, that makes him look kind of bald and fat. Okay, moving on to eyes, you can adjust, of course, the eyes from the different presets. 
So we go, we could go from none if you didn't want any eyes to the round eyes to the female eyes. So again, you kind of see that there is a pattern here. You just basically go through and adjust and place down presets and you can adjust the spacing and so on. It almost reminds me of, of making a me. If you have a Wii or a 3DS, when you make your Miis, it's kind of like that. You just kind of go in, you get some presets, you can adjust some of the parameters of those presets and so on. That's kind of what this reminds me of. You have the mouth, you can choose different mouths. You have your nose. And then there's the head prop, which can only be selected or modified if your preset happens to be a creature. So if you have a creature, as you can see I do right here, you can then add a baseball cap or a crown and so on. So that's something to keep in mind when you are working with your character here and adjusting your presets. But anyway, once you have that, you also have the vertical adjustment of your face. You can also do that as well. Moving on to the movement tab, we have different presets here for movement. We have walk, jump, kick, and wave. So for instance, with the walk, we can adjust different types of things here. We can adjust the steps per second, the step distance, the step height, and so on. So if we want him to walk faster, we can simply increase this option. If we want him to increase the step distance, we make that larger. So he kind of has more of a larger step to his step. If you want the step height to increase, so his legs go way up to the point where it's ridiculous, as you can see on the screen, we can do that. And the arm swing, the bigger you put it, the, of course, more exaggerated it gets. So as you can see, we can really do some really weird looking stuff here if you adjust the presets accordingly. So it just depends on, of course, what you're going for. For the jump, we just simply have a set jump. And it doesn't really matter what your presets are, it's going to do what it's going to do. For the kick, of course, you just have a standard kick. And of course, as always, you can adjust the view to see how this kick is taking place. And finally, you have the wave, which of course allows you to just have your character wave. Okay, so moving on to clothing. For this particular character, we can adjust the pants and the shirt. So we could adjust the type of pants, if they're long or they're short. So we could wear shorts, for instance. We can adjust the color, and we can put it to whatever we want. So we could put yellow shorts if we wanted to. For the shirt, long or short sleeve. And color can also be adjusted. And finally, for the style, we can choose different styles of skin, hair, and stroke color, and of course the stroke width. So clicking on the skin color, we can adjust this to whatever we want. We can make it blue if we so chose. So it could be an alien of sorts. Hair color, again, adjust to whatever you want. So all of that is pretty um, self-explanatory. In fact, most of this is pretty self-explanatory and that's what makes it so cool and easy to use. You can just go in and get this character created and done and good to go. And I should also point out too that if you are looking for something just right off the bat, you're not really sure what you're looking for. You just want to get some options on the table. You can always click the randomize button. This will get you some pretty interesting results as you can see from this lovely lady right here. But if you just keep hitting random, you'll just keep getting different types of things. Like for instance, you can now see I have a cartoon body with a picture of some sort of animal. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. So basically you just go through and you can just do some really different looking things here. So let's just put call this good. We'll use this character as the example and click OK. And make sure you have export all views selected before doing that. So click OK. So now you have your character 
on the stage. What you'll notice is it creates a switch layer for your character. And I've done a tutorial on switch layers before, but basically what we can do now is right click on this layer and choose which view we want the character to be at. So we could choose the side view to see the character at the side and so on. And from there we can do whatever we want. We could click on the side view then, and then we could choose our manipulate bones tool and we could manipulate the bones themselves. We could even go a step further by going inside that layer and choosing the different layers from here. And basically, we could alter them, we could redraw them, we could reshape them to further um, modify this character to make it our own. And finally, if you're looking to add in the movements that we saw in the character wizard, all you need to do is go to Window, Actions, and you'll see it says Main Timeline, and we can put in the walk, jump, kick, or wave, and this is our main timeline, so that is fine. So all we have to do is double click on one of these actions, like the walk, and you'll now see that the walk is in place for this character. So what we could do then is take our character and drag him over here at frame zero and then at about frame 72 have him walk across the stage and then come back here to the um, frame zero and just hit play and we can see him walk across he's going a little bit too fast so i'd probably just readjust my keyframe to about frame five and then retry that and we can see that he now walks across the stage. Again, very minimal effort is required here with the character wizard because it pretty much does all of the heavy lifting for you. From here, you can now take this new character and make a cartoon. You can use those preset movements, you can modify the movements, you can make your own movements now using the manipulate bones tool, and so on. So anyway, to wrap this up, if you're new to Anime Studio, or if you're just looking to jump right in, the Character Wizard is a great tool, and I highly recommend that you check it out.